Tesla revealed the Model X 10 years ago in February of 2012. At the time, they focused on functionality, style, and performance. They wanted a car with more function than a minivan, more style than an SUV, and more performance than a sports car. The Model X filled all of these roles and then some with its crazy falcon wing doors that shocked everyone who saw them at first. Ultimately, the Model X has changed quite a bit and stayed the same in many ways. So today, we're going to review the latest version, the Model X Plaid. This is the refreshed Model X that Tesla launched alongside the new Model S and has been slowly ramping up production and deliveries on. It's also the quickest accelerating SUV with a zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds or faster and a quarter mile of 9.9 .9 seconds or faster. Those times are wild for a million dollar sports car and even crazier on an SUV that seats six. There's a lot to talk about with this car, good and bad, so let's get into it. Here is the Tesla Model X, an all-electric SUV that can seat up to seven depending on your configuration. It's pricey too, starting at $104,990, but it provides a lot in one package that sets it apart from other vehicles, including other vehicles from Tesla. For a while, the Model X remained the same, with small improvements here and there, but the interior was largely unchanged since its unveil in 2012. In early 2021, Tesla announced the refreshed Model S and X, completely redoing the interior and updating the powertrain to drive faster than you can imagine. It performs like no SUV you've ever driven, and it's absolutely insane to experience. The Model X is a four-door sedan that seats five, six, or seven. In a similar vein to the Model S, Tesla sells a long-range and plaid model of the Model X, and both of these cars are extremely similar. The only real difference is the powertrain and speed. All interior features we talk about today are included with both cars. For the plaid model, one difference is that they only offer six seats, and that is what we're reviewing today. There are two seats up front, sitting high with normal adjustments heating and ventilation. Two seats in the second row with a pass-through in the middle, and these seats can scoot forward as well, allowing people to easily access the two seats that are in the third row. Since the Model X is a tall SUV, all seats are actually fairly spacious, with the third row being the only one that can get a little tight for adults. I myself am 5'10", and I feel like for an average drive, I'd be fairly comfortable back here. My head almost hits the glass roof, and the middle row definitely has to be scooted forward to fit my legs, but it still seems reasonable for myself and whoever would sit in the middle row. On a longer road trip, this would start feeling a bit cramped though, as most third rows do for full-sized adults. The second row is definitely very spacious with plenty of headroom for me. On top of the space you've already seen, the Model X has a spacious trunk with an understorage compartment and a side cubby. The third row seats fold flat with buttons on the seats to open that space up as a pass-through. This provides a good amount of additional storage. Then on top of that, the second row seats can shift forward individually with controls on those seats to add extra depth when putting in larger cargo. It also gives more room for third row passengers to get in or have enough leg room. Lastly, there's additional space in the front trunk thanks to the lack of an engine in this fully electric SUV. This is the largest front trunk of any car that Tesla ships, and I believe it's the largest of any EV that is available to buy. There are a number of features in the Model X that set it apart from all of Tesla's other vehicles. Even though the Model S and X share a lot in common, doors and seats are very different in these cars, and it really makes the Model X feel more premium than the Model S. For one, there's the Falcon Wing doors. These doors are a big draw for this car and can be opened in a number of different ways. When open, they give the Model X a distinct exotic car look, and they seem to draw people like a moth to a flame. I couldn't stop taking pictures or filming these doors, even though the Model X has been out for a long time with these exact doors. On screen, you can open each Falcon Wing individually or both at the same time. You can also do the same from the key fob, choosing one or all doors, and there's a close all option from the key fob as well that will close all five doors at the same time. Then you can open or close the doors from controls accessible in the rear seats of the car. There are sensors on these doors that ensure that they don't hit anything and they can take particularly narrow paths when needed in tight spaces. Tesla says that if you yourself can squeeze into the door, the doors can squeeze themselves open or closed. Not only do these doors and the rear hatch open and shut on their own, but the front doors do as well. It's the only car Tesla ships with this feature. As you approach the Model X, the front door will auto present itself and open entirely for you as an option. It takes some getting used to, especially since it opens all the way, not just partially. 
But when you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty great to just walk up and have the driver's side door open and then you get in. Then once inside, the car will automatically close the door when you hit the brake. Alternatively, you can open or close any of the doors from the inside by pressing them on screen or pressing the door open buttons on the doors themselves. These are extremely premium features that are only available on the Model X. If you don't want to use them though, the front doors can function as normal doors just like a Model 3, S, or Y. I personally would love to see these doors as an option on the Model S since the car is so similarly priced, but they ultimately seem like something Tesla wants to keep on their fanciest cars. The Model S sells fine with its normal doors, and maybe automatic front doors don't actually make as much sense on a lower riding car like a Model S. Also, all of the doors being automatic won't appeal to everyone, and even in my testing of just a few hours, I experienced some issues with them. More on that in a minute. Tesla offers a few paint colors for the Model X. Red, blue, black, white, and gray. For the interior, you can choose white, like this car has, black, or cream. White really shines in the refreshed Model X. Then you can choose between 20 or 22 inch wheels. This particular Model X is white with white interior and the standard 20 inch wheels, which get the most range and best ride quality. Up front, the Model X has a center console, the same as the refreshed Model S with a bunch of storage options. The cup holders can slide around to your liking and there is more storage in the armrest. Attached to the center console is a wireless charger for two smartphones, and then we can get a look at the interior as a whole. One feature that the Model X has that no other vehicle has is its incredible panoramic windshield. All of Tesla's vehicles ship with a glass roof, but those tend to benefit rear passengers the most, since the roof really starts where the normal A pillar is, and you can't really see it as a passenger unless you're looking straight up. In the Model X, the view is incredible as a driver, and it's uninterrupted, especially since the sun visors attach to the sides of the interior. I'm not sure there is any other vehicle you can drive that gives you more of a wide panoramic view. Also in view as a driver, will be the instrument cluster display, giving you relevant info like speed, charge level, autopilot visualizations, and next navigation step, along with the main 17-inch horizontal infotainment screen. Previously, this screen was vertical, and the refreshed 17-inch horizontal screen is a big improvement, especially when it comes to the software. Of course, the next thing to notice is the yoke. Tesla ships the Model S and X exclusively with this steering wheel and hasn't mentioned any plans to offer a round one. It also is devoid of any stocks in favor of automatic control controls and then touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. Many people look at this wheel and immediately think that it's crazy, but as a Plaid Model S owner, I can say that you really get used to it and learn to really enjoy it, especially when taking advantage of the speed that this car includes. The one fault I find is with the horn button. There are touch buttons for blinkers, lights, voice commands, and then the horn, meaning there is no sound when you press the center of the yoke. This is an odd choice by Tesla, but something that they might change soon enough. The other controls on this wheel are the scroll wheels, which adjust and enable autopilot settings and music. In any case, the rest of the controls are handled on the 17-inch screen. It's extremely responsive thanks to its updated AMD processor and includes navigation, music, climate controls, and more. Climate controls are a big change on this refresh, eliminating any physical vent locations in favor of an invisible AC system you dial in on screen. This was originally introduced in the Model 3, and now Tesla includes it in all of their cars. At first glance, it can seem scary to always have to adjust this on screen, but your driver profile remembers your vent positioning, and typically, you can just adjust the auto temperature with one tap at the bottom of the screen. You can also turn on heated or cooled seats on screen, turn on bioweapon defense mode to take advantage of the true HEPA filtration system included, and more. For music, Tesla has their own system with Spotify, Tidal, Slacker Radio, Sirius XM, Radio, and Bluetooth, and these services really showcase the amazing sound system in this car. It's a 22-speaker system that likely sounds better than anything you've heard in a vehicle. It's the same system as the Plaid Model S that I'm used to, but since it's a larger vehicle, there were certain songs that sounded even clearer and had more depth in the Model X. Overall, the screen is very easy to learn and includes a lot of great things. You can even shift windows around on screen to your liking, play games while parked, watch TV while parked, and more. Let's take it for a quick drive and test out the handling, suspension, and plaid launches, and then I'll get into the negatives of this car in my experience. So I do own a Model S plaid, but most of the time I actually drive the Model Y. And the Model Y is very similar to the Model X in its overall body and shape and size, but it's built on the Model 3 platform. And the suspension in the Y is one of my biggest complaints. It's pretty bumpy. And this is far better. We're going over quite a few bumps here and even just the normal road. So much of this I would be feeling 
all the time in the Model Y and I'm not really feeling it in the Model X. So it's definitely much better than that and that's because it has an air suspension just like the Model S does. Woo. <laughs> So one of the big things about the Plaid powertrain is that electric cars for a while now have had impressive zero to 60 times, but then after 60, they kind of drop off. And that's just how they were designed previously and how the cooling was designed in the batteries. The whole thing with the Plaid is that it's designed for extra cooling and the powertrain is designed that you have access to full horsepower all the way up to, in the Model S, they say 200 miles per hour. In this, I think it's something around 150 but you can just really get a feel for it in this car especially because you can already be going 30 and just floor it and then out of nowhere you're at 90. Handling is also pretty great on this. In the Model Y the turning radius isn't the greatest and this is definitely a solid turning radius. A lot easier to make tight turns than it is in my Model Y. I'm coming up to a cul-de-sac. I can do it pretty tight in this thing. Wow, that is, <laughs> definitely can't do it at all that tight in the Model Y. Right now I'm going 30 and now here I'm just gonna gun it. Absolutely crazy. That was up to 75 or maybe higher. I looked and it was 75. Woo. So for me, the Model X Plaid is the prime example of Tesla just trying to prove that electric cars are better than other cars because there's no reason you need this much speed in this car. If you want that much speed, a Model S makes sense because it's like a sports car. It's designed that way, although it is really just a family sedan that is souped up for sportiness. But with this especially, it fits six people in the plaid version for real, not like tiny, tiny back seats. And it has the falcon wing doors, it has all this crazy stuff that actually can add some function and make it easier to load your kids in, but then it does a zero to 60 faster than some Formula One cars can do, at least on the zero to 60. And it's just something that doesn't quite make sense, but it's kind of hilarious when you experience it. Here we go, I'm gonna set up into official launch mode here. So the way you do this, I'm used to this in the Plaid Model S, is you press the brake all the way down press the gas all the way down, the accelerator all the way down. It says preparing for launch, suspension entering cheetah stance. Three, two, one, go. Woo! All right. <laughs> so that is super impressive, super fun. But as someone who's used to a Plaid Model S launch, obviously it's not the same. It's not as stomach dropping. It's actually kind of nice though. It's, it's the fun roller coaster. You're going super fast in a car that it doesn't make sense to go that fast in. But my stomach isn't completely turned over right now. And I'm not afraid after five launches that I'll probably need to go take a nap, which is what it's like in the Model S. But let's go do another one. Give it another go. Definitely super fun still. Three, two, one, go. Oh. Woo! Okay, <laughs> yeah. For me, with the launch mode in this car specifically, it's not the zero to 30 that hits me as hard as like the 30 to 80 or wherever you end up. Um, oh, that is fast. Woo! It's a fantastic experience driving the Model X, but as with any Tesla, it's not perfect. The Model X is Tesla's fanciest car, and as a Plaid Model S owner, I can definitely say that when you're in the Model X, it feels a lot more like it justifies the price. The interior, especially in the rear, just feels like it's built better, and with the automatic doors, you really feel like you're getting an extra premium feature at this price. With all of those features, though, come room for error, and room for things that feel a little unnecessary. The automatic doors in the Model X are great, but not perfect. For the driver's side door, it would open on approach, but sometimes not all the way. Then if I needed to open it manually, it felt like I was fighting the door to get it open. Other times it would try to shut on me if I was standing in the path of the door, doing something like setting up a camera. For the Falcon Wings, they are great and can really make getting in or loading in cargo much easier. You can stand up with the doors open above you, which no other car can do. However, these also aren't perfect. For one, they take quite some time to open compared to just opening a door. There were times when I'd be in the back seat, need to get out real quick, and it just felt excessive to have to open this entire falcon wing to get out. But it's the only way out. It also takes a decent amount of time to open before you can step out. 
Not only does it feel unnecessary, but you'll be waiting there longer for it to open, as opposed to a typical door. Other times, the falcon wings would only open about 75% of the way, and it was unclear why this was happening. There was nothing in the path to stop it from opening. Then, to me, it's just hilarious that I can open the driver's side door, passenger's side door, each falcon wing, and the trunk automatically, but the front trunk is still 100% manual. You can release it from the screen or key fob, but have to open and close it manually. Most other premium electric cars coming out include a powered front trunk, so it really feels like a miss to not have a powered front trunk in the Model X when every other door can be opened automatically. When speaking to this owner, they also mentioned that for cargo, they never load it into the sides of the car because opening the Falcon wings just ends up taking too much time. It's one of those things that comes with big advantages and is very cool looking while simultaneously coming with some disadvantages. Another thing I notice about the Falcon wing is that as a passenger in the second row, there's no real place to put your arm. There's this nub that feels like they cut off a handle and just makes it kind of awkward as to where to put your arm or hand, especially if you're doing a launch. Other things I noticed in the Model X are build quality. It's still the Tesla regardless of the price, and I've yet to see or take delivery of a Tesla without some sort of quality control issue. This owner was heading to their first service appointment a couple days after I spent time with it, and a couple issues I noticed were generally loose trim, wrinkles in the seats, a trunk alignment issue, and a loose trim piece where the rear view mirror is. One more thing I noticed that is very odd is that when you fold down the rear seats, the third row seats. It's very easy to fold them down from the back, but when you go to fold them back up, there's actually no way to fold them back up unless you crawl into there and press that button that's on the top of the seats. So this would mean that I would have to wrap around, open each falcon wing, and then reach in to fold the third row seats back up. To me, it takes much more time than it should, especially since the seats are right there, but I can't quite reach over to the control that's on top of the seats. So those are the negatives in my experience, but to finish out the features included in the Model X, the screen settings that affect driving the most allow you to dial in suspension settings, acceleration modes, steering modes, and autopilot settings. And that's where you choose between chill, sport, or plaid mode. With those suspension settings, you can also raise the ride height for steeper driveways and save that location for next time. It raises a little higher than what the Model S does. Having Plaid acceleration available at any time is absolutely crazy in this huge SUV. It has so much power that it just doesn't really make sense on a car this size. It's the same 1,020 horsepower Plaid powertrain as the record-breaking Plaid Model S, so it does make sense there, but still doesn't actually make sense when you drive it. Tesla quotes a 0 to 60 in as little as 2.5 seconds, but that number has actually already been beaten in a number of independent tests, getting as low as 2.3 seconds for some owners, which is why earlier I said 2.5 seconds or faster. Additionally, Tesla quotes a quarter mile time of 9.9 .9 seconds, already crazy fast, but independent tests have achieved a 0 to 60 in as little as 9.75 seconds on this car. These are world records for an SUV. For many, these specs don't matter, especially on a six-seater SUV. If you want speed, you can opt for a Plaid Model S that performs better, but Tesla likes to prove that electric vehicles can be better than gas vehicles in every way possible. Even a family SUV, however pricey it is, can beat sports cars and Formula One cars in a 0-60 race. Plaid launch mode is especially fun in this car because, again, it just doesn't make sense and feels so goofy but also stomach-dropping. If you don't care about speed, though, or plan to drive this SUV normally, like most do, it's also a fantastic car to drive. The fact that it's fully electric and includes one pedal driving makes driving a really great experience. It drives smooth and rides smooth thanks to its adaptive air suspension, and the interior is very quiet. I expected the yoke to be a bit weird on the Model X, but even in this SUV, it's really fun and easy to use. It really is a joy to drive, especially with the panoramic windshield, but if you don't want to drive, you also have Tesla's autopilot system. This system utilizes eight cameras around the car to enable traffic-aware cruise control and auto steer, keeping you centered in your lane. You can also add features like auto lane change and summon with the full self-driving upgrade. As with every Tesla, safety is a huge focus. Included with that autopilot system are automatic safety features like automatic emergency emergency braking, and more, but if an accident does occur, Tesla says, quote, Model X is built from the ground up as an electric vehicle with a high-strength architecture and floor-mounted battery pack for incredible occupant protection and low rollover risk. Every Model X includes Tesla's latest active safety features, such as automatic emergency braking at no extra cost. The Model X, even though it is an SUV, has a very low rollover risk thanks to the battery pack sitting on the bottom of the car. For the 2020 Model X and prior, it achieved five stars in every category 
category for safety. The refreshed model has yet to be tested, but should only be improved since the exterior is largely unchanged from previous years. Now with the battery pack that I mentioned that helps with safety, you'll also achieve an EPA estimated range of up to 348 miles on the long range model and 333 miles on this plaid as configured with these wheels. That's around 70 to 100 more miles of range than we're seeing in most electric SUVs coming out and can really get the job done, especially considering Tesla's large supercharger network. I will say though, at the price you're paying for the Model X, I wish that the range would be a clear distinguisher from a Model Y coming in at a 330 mile EPA range. The Tesla Model X overall is a fantastic vehicle. It includes a solid EV range, drives better than most SUVs you can buy, and quicker than most cars you can buy at any price. It also includes a lot of premium features that set it apart from Tesla's other vehicles, but sometimes those features can be a bit finicky. I think the Model X does a great job at delivering on what Tesla charges for it, and if you're in the market for a luxury SUV, it can definitely fit the bill. Whether you go plaid or not, you'll get all of what I talked about, minus a bit of speed in the long range version. The refreshed interior on the Model X definitely makes a big difference and takes this car into the future with an incredibly responsive infotainment screen and fun to drive yoke. In the meantime, if you want to see how the Model X stacks up against Tesla's latest Plaid Model S, you can check out my review of that car linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.